This first question shows us a table with possible scores on a spinner, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And it sometimes tells you the frequency of how many times that particular score happened and sometimes it's telling you the probability of that score happening. Now overall the spinner was spun 200 times. Um, I'm going to first of all work out the missing probabilities. So if the frequency of spinning 1 was 30 then the probability of 1 must be 30 divided by 200 and that comes to 0.15. Uh, the probability of 2 has already been worked out for you and 3 has. I can't do the probability of 4, I don't know any data for 4, um, so I'm going to do the probability of 5 occurring. Now that happened 40 times out of those 200, so the probability is 40 divided by 200 and that comes to 0 0.2. Now I can actually work out this one here now because I know the total probability of all events of 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 happening must be 1. And if I go and add these, that's 0 0.15, in fact I'll do it, 0 0.15 added to 0 0.1 added to 0 0.3 added to 0 0.2, add up all of those, that comes to 0 0.75. So that means the probability of 4 must equal 1 minus the 0 0.75 and that's going to be 0 0.25. We've now got two frequencies to find out. Um, now if we know the probability is 0 0.3 and the spinner was spun 200 times then the frequency that I'd expect would be 0 0.3 times 200 and that comes to 60. And with this one here, I'd expect the frequency to be its probability 0 0.25 times um, the 200, and that comes to 50. And if I add up those frequencies, I should get 200, which I do. Part B of the question says Amy spins a spinner once. Find the probability she scores four or more. It's not just four, it's four or more. So that counts as probability of four, and it could also be the probability of five. So the probability of four equals 0 0.25, added to the probability of getting a five is 0 0.2, so the total there is going to be 0 0.45. And part C, the last part of this question, says, if Amy were to spin the spinner 340 times, work out an estimate for the number of times that she'd score 3. Well, that's just going to be 340 times, and what's the probability of scoring 3? That is 0 0.3, so it's 340 times 0 0.3, and that comes to 102. This next question describes a bag containing some marbles. Each marble is green, blue or yellow. Ian takes a marble at random from the bag. The probability he'll take a blue marble is 0.25. The probability he'll take a yellow marble is 0.3. So it's probably a blue was 0.25. Probability of a yellow equals 0.3. And it says work out the probability take a green marble. Well, if we go and take 0.25, add 0.3, we get 0.55, so the probability of getting those two colours is 0.55, which means the only other option is a green, so the probability of getting a green equals 1 take away 0.55, and that equals 0.45. The second part of this question says Jessica takes at random one of the marbles from the bag and replaces it. She does this 210 times. Work out an estimate of the number of times she takes a yellow marble. So she does it 210 times, so that's 210 times and you're looking for the yellow marble. So what's the probability of a yellow marble? That was 0.3, so it's going to be 210 times 0.3. 
and if you work that out on your calculator that comes to 63. So she should take a yellow marble about 63 times. This last probability question, Akisha has two spinners. The first spinner has numbers 1, 3, 4, 6. The second spinner has numbers 2, 3, 5, 7. The spinners are spun and the scores are added. Draw a sample space table to show all possible outcomes. So that's a table of outcomes. I mean, probability, we call it a sample space. So it's got four numbers on the first spinner. So it's going to be four rows and four numbers on the second spinner, so that's going to be four columns. So your four rows and four columns. It doesn't matter which order we do it. Um, I'm going to put the one, three, four, six up here, so that's going to be one, three, four, six, and this one's going to be the two, three, five, and seven so that you don't get confused between what the scores on the individual dice were and what the overall outcome was. I'm going to use a red pen to write down the outcomes. The outcomes are scores being added. So this is going to be those, uh, this one is added to the two and that gives us a total of three there. This two is added to that three, that's a possible outcome of five. Um, if this was four and that was two, the outcome would be six. And if this spinner was six and that was two, the outcome would be eight. And this one, we got three on one spinner, one on the other, that's a total of four. This was three and a three, which makes six, three, that makes seven, this is nine. Likewise, we can quickly fill in the table. Six, eight, nine, 11, eight, 10, 11, and 13. Now we can use those outcomes to answer the rest of the questions. So the next question went and said, work out the probability of getting a score of exactly eight. Now, how many times do we get exactly eight here? That's one there, two there, three times. So the probability of eight equals three divided by, and we know there's a total of 16 scores there. So that's three divided by 16. And we can leave that as a fraction. Um, that will not simplify. The next question says, work out the probability that at least, at least one of the spinners lands on a three. Okay, so here, um, the threes, if I get a green pen to highlight this, I can't do this straight from the outcomes, but I know here, all of those scores there, this top spinner landed on a three, and then this spinner here, for all of those scores, This spinner landed on a three. So how many times altogether did at least one of them land on a three? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times um, at least one of them landed on a three. So that's gonna be seven out of, again, there's 16 outcomes. So that's seven out of 16. And that is a fraction that will not simplify. And the last part of this question says, work out the probability of getting a score of less than six less than six, so six doesn't count. So I look at the table and there is how many scores less than six? All of those are greater than six. One, two, three scores are less than six. So that is three out of 16. And again, if you could simplify the fractions, you cancel down to make it the simplest fraction. This one doesn't simplify, so that's our final answer.